and welcome to Greatest Work, a podcast where we discuss textual connections within the Book of Mormon and also about how we can gather Israel in every day in small and simple ways. So we're very uh, fortunate to, to have a guest on our podcast, Brigham from Come Follow Me. And can you go ahead and share your story behind Thumb Follow Me and how you produce YouTube videos and tell us all about it? Absolutely. Thanks, Christina. Thanks for having me on. And it's great to be here with you. Love what you do. So my name is Brigham Sunday. My brother and I run Storybox Studios. We've been in business for about 15 years. We create all sorts of videos, animated videos, live action videos, corporate videos for companies. But on the side, we also, as a kind of a passion project, create have created a series called Thumb Follow Me on YouTube. And it follows the Come Follow Me curriculum for the church. And they're just fun, silly little thumb characters that take us through the weekly lessons. And it's just another resource for families to use in their weekly Come Follow Me studies. And we felt that the reason we got into this is we felt there was a need. We were getting through the thumb. Well, as we taught our kids, so I have four girls and my brother has six boys and we have a lot of little kids between us. And we felt like we were getting through the Come Follow Me content pretty quickly during the week and just felt like we didn't have enough to resources. We wanted more resources and we wanted fun and silly, silly resources to help spur a conversation amongst kids. And so we decided to create our own because we, we own and run an animation studio. And so we decided to just go out there and create our own content. And not that there wasn't a lot of good content out there, but we felt like there was, there was a need for more fun content, silly content to get kids excited about the scriptures, get kids excited about learning and get kids excited about the gospel. And so that's where Thumb Follow Me came in, started back in January. We, January, we've been going for six months. It's been going really well. We've got 10,000 subscribers so far and growing, and we're having a lot of fun with it. And so I think the biggest reason why we started it is just because we love the scriptures. I love the scriptures. They're fun. I can't get enough of them. There's fun stories in the scriptures. And a lot of times we just take things way too, not, not that there are serious things in the scriptures, but a lot of times we forget how fun the scriptures can be and how those serious things can also be fun and joyful. And so we get, my brother and I get to write and direct and do the voiceover for the, for the scripts and create those and, and really get to dive into how fun the scriptures can be. And so first and foremost, they're for our families, but now we're getting to share that with others and, and hopefully some people like them or it puts a smile on their face as they remember some of these fun scripture stories. So that's, awesome. that's it. That's it in a nutshell. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. I'm just curious, how did you come up with the thumb character idea? You know, there was an old artist from the 80s that Ed Emberly is his name, and he would create comics and things with thumbprints. And we remembered those, we loved those. And we had a, an animator working with us at the time who also remembered those. And so we decided, hey, let's do something simple. Uh, thumbprints are easy to animate. And so we just did thumbs. And, and since thumbs are a big, thumbs are a big idea on YouTube, you know, thumbs up, thumbs. Oh yeah. That, like, and it rhymed with come follow me. So we did thumb follow me. So that's just, there, there wasn't a huge story behind it. Just. <laughs> So we, we liked it and we liked those old comics from from uh Emberly. So yeah. yeah. So besides the you know following along with the come follow me scripture reading outlines, what are some of the key themes that you focus on? So we have we have a pretty big team that we work with of animators, and part of our team is we have an LDS Institute director that works with us. And so we'll write scripts and send them to him just to have him check over the doctrine to make sure that we're okay. And, but as far as themes go, we, we read through our lessons each week and we, we kind of centralize on a theme that we want our kids to, to be aware of. And so we focus in on, obviously we focus in on the sections from come follow me, but we hyper-focus on something where we want, um, 
we want our kids to know at a more deeper level or to understand a little bit better. For example, this past week, we did Al Alma and Amulek. And we were thinking, you know what? I've never heard like a deep story about friendship and the power of Christ-like friends. And so we took it a different, a little bit different route and decided to focus on something about what it means to be a Christ-like friend. And, and so that's, yeah, that's kind of how we choose. We just think about our kids and what message we want them. And then we filter it through, come follow me and just come up, come, come out with that. And so, you know, obviously our deeper meaning behind everything is we want kids to love the scriptures and be excited about them. We want them to read about Alma and Amulek and say, I want to read more about this story because this is amazing. And so our deeper guiding um, reason is to get kids into the scriptures. Yeah, and, that's a great purpose. Know, and some kids may be like, hey, there's no, there's no moving vans in ancient Jerusalem, you know, so, you know, <laughs> so we're taking some liberties, obviously, but the goal is just to get them into the scriptures and get excited about it. Because I mean, how many of us as adults don't even remember some of the stories very well, you know, we, we reread it and we're like, you know, Alma confronting Zeezrom and then Zeezrom, we forget about him. Then when we realize later on, Zeezrom went to teach a, a, a mission with, with um, Alma when they visit the Zoramites later on. And so like, even as adults, we forget these little things um, in the scriptures. And so hopefully these kind of funny little animations will help, help kids to, and us adults remember some of these cool, amazing stories in the Book of Mormon. So. Yeah, that's cool that you also have, you know, the videos for the week and then the songs, kind of music videos. Yeah, yeah, we came up with a song idea just because we wanted, we were a little frustrated with some of the songs our kids were getting stuck in their heads. You know, Baby Shark and some of these like Cocomelon songs, which, which are fine, but they were just um, kind of mindless fluff that gets caught in a kid's head. And so we're like, man, wouldn't it be great to create silly songs that maybe don't have as much scriptural content to them, but they could get stuck in kids' heads. And with the end goal of, hey, I want to learn more about Nephi and his family leaving Jerusalem, or I have never thought about, you know, Sam and what he went through. And so our goal is just to make silly, goofy songs that maybe help kids to think, I want to, I want to read more about that, you know. And, and so, yeah, we, not everyone loves the songs, but we love producing them. So, <laughs> so we keep <laughs> making silly songs. So have it's you listened to some of those? Oh yeah. I've listened to the Sam song and then I oh, listened cool. to the Amelie and Amelie like video. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, they're fun. We, we love creating the songs and um, we have a lot of fun writing those. So yeah, I love how creative they are. Oh, thanks. Thanks. So can you describe uh, more of your creative process, you know, maybe like from my like idea to final product, like what goes into creating one of these videos? Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, it takes a, a small army to make these. We have um, so typically my brother and I divvy up the duties a little bit. And I'll um, I'm working ahead a little a bit, bit. So I'll take on the writing, a lot of the writing in the uh, building out these stories. Um, for example, I'm working on 29 right now, which is, Al or sorry, when I say 29, this is our 29th video. So I'm on um, Alma 31 through 33, which of course is, or 32 through 34, which of course is like the seed, you know, Alma comparing the seed um, to faith. And so, so right now I'm crafting an initial script and then I'll send it over to my brother to review, get his thoughts. And then I'll send it over to um, Institute director for his thoughts. And then I'll send it over to our comedy writer for him to add some comedy, um, some specific visual comedy to it. And from there, it goes over to our storyboard team or our anime. Um, and we have maybe three, three to six of them, three to six animators that are working on that. And then they'll start to build it out. And while they're doing that, my brother will do the voiceover and the mumbling sounds. And then we send it to our sound design guy who adds in the music and sound effects. And then we're done. And that usually takes about a good solid two weeks to do all of that. Wow. So we're 
we're always trying to work ahead. So, so yeah. it does take quite a bit of time and effort to get those out. And we're slowly, we're kind of week to week. We're not super far ahead. So we're trying to get more, more ahead. And then we also have some team members that will cut like shorts or different versions of the video um, to do that. And, and Noah or my brother's name, Noah, Noah and I are, are using our corporate team to kind of build these out. So we don't, we don't make much money on thumb follow me. We just do it, you know, kind of as a passion project. So we're using our team members that work for us on a daily basis when they're not working on corporate stuff that pays the bills, then, then we have them work on thumb follow me stuff. And so that's kind of, yeah, the gist of it. Wow. That's <laughs> amazing. How much goes into it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's very, very nice to see the finished product product and where we're done, but then it's daunting to know, like it's never ending. So we got to move on to the next week. <laughs> yeah. Are you planning to like keep going for all the scripture so. books? We, we don't know we don't know we're kind of trying to figure it out as we go we would love to grow it further into something bigger but we we're still new to the youtube space and trying to figure it all out kind of kind of like yourself and trying to see how we can make it work there is you know we do put a, a big there, there's quite a big cost into these that we're doing on our own and so we're trying to figure out ways on how to make it work for us a little bit yeah. like we rolled out some t-shirts and things like that and so we're just trying to play with different ways in which we can kind of keep it going because right now just my brother and I are paying for everything on our own and so yeah we're just trying to make it work so <laughs> okay um what have been some of the most rewarding aspects of working yeah. on thumb follow me one of the most rewarding aspects has been the comments that we get. We've been overwhelmed with the response from families all over the world, from Philippines to Africa to, you know, all over the United States from people that have really liked them. Uh, the missionary aspects of it has been big too. you know, people that are not active or people that are just exploring the gospel a little bit. We've, we've heard back from them as well. And so a lot of parents, you know, um, even kids writing in. And so I think that's the most rewarding to know that it's making a difference in, in some of these other uh, people's lives. And so, and just hearing them, you know, talk about remembering these scripture stories better because of our quirky little video or something like that. And so that makes us happy to hear those success stories. So That's amazing that you have such an international reach too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had a mother that sent us some videos in the Philippines of her kids dancing to one of our videos. And, and that was cool. You know, that, that was kind of exciting to, to see that. I think that was to I'm just Sam. But, but yeah, maybe their kids would be excited about Sam or reading the scriptures one day. <laughs> yeah. So how do you feel that your work helps to support gathering Israel or what President Nelson has talked about is referring to the gathering as like the greatest work on earth today. How do you feel that Thumb Follow Me supports helping others make covenants, keep covenants, gather Israel? Yeah, yeah I love that. Yeah, I think we we want to put good into the world. And I think that uh, that applies to gathering Israel. We want to put good things into the world that lead to god and christ and it's kind of silly to think about you know our silly little videos leading to christ but you know as you watch them we try to integrate some spiritual aspects and and um we're, we hope that that brings people to a deeper relationship with the with heavenly father and with jesus christ and so we want to and one way to do that is through youtube and as you know youtube is a mess of of garbage and lots of you know not good stuff out there. So we want it to be a positive vibe in the world that can bring people closer to the scriptures, to God and Christ, and thus, you know, help to gather Israel in that regard. You know, there's a lot of grandmothers and grandfathers that, you know, show our content to families, their own families who are no longer active in the church. 
And, you know, you never know. There might be a little spark somewhere where we can, you know, help someone along the way. So that's what we're trying to do. Gather Israel. Yeah. And I think also what you mentioned before about, you know, getting, wanting to get the kids into the scriptures, mm -hmm. you know, as your one of your main purposes, I think that's huge. And that's, that'll definitely help even if it's a, you know, small or a big way. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Do you have children yourself? I do. I have a two-year-old. Oh, nice. Very good. Very good. There you go. And you'll start to think about that very soon. How can I get this kid into the scriptures? So. Yeah, it's always a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's always trying to find like, how can I integrate this into the everyday life? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And they're, yeah. And they're bombarded with so many different opposing voices. So it's, that's where we wanted to come in and just give them an alternate option of, you know, not to replace anything. Like we don't want to replace scriptures or any of the LD, or any of the other church resources because those are always first and foremost. But just to give families an extra resource to use and prompt discussion. So you know what we hope for is that parents watch these videos and then have a discussion about something with their kids. So yeah, and it sounds like it's been really well received. Yeah, yeah, it's it's going it's going well, and uh, like I said, we are very impressed with the comments that we get back from people it makes us happy so. so how can our listeners or you and and your team and them follow me and and get involved in making an impact help their kids get interested in scriptures and learning about christ absolutely i i think the biggest thing is just to to obviously to watch and to share your thoughts what's working what your kids love uh, share with us what you would love to see as far as songs or story ideas. We're all, always exploring different things. And, uh, you know, just we're a pretty close knit community. Like I, I personally respond to every single comment on YouTube. And so it's me doing it. And so I love connecting and listening and talking to. And so just keep those comments coming. Keep, keep, uh, reading your scriptures <laughs> <laughs> that's great okay and now our final question we ask all our guests is what can you do this week to help contribute to the gathering of Israel and bringing people to Christ yeah I think you know I I was reading today in the scriptures and just a scripture really stood out to me that I was reading in in the words of Mormon so Mormon has just finished, you know, abridging the small plates of Nephi, and he inserts a chapter in the words of Mormon, just one chapter to kind of talk about that abridgment. And then he moves on to, you know, the larger plates with, you know, Mosiah and all these other stories that we're going to get. Um, but he makes a comment in verse seven of chapter one, where he says, and he's talking about God, and he says, he worketh in me to do to do his will, basically is what it says. He worketh in me. And so I, I think the biggest thing is to realize that if you allow it and read the scriptures, Heavenly Father will work within you to share the gospel, to reach out to others, to testify to them. And, and I can feel that he worketh in me like it's, it's something that's um, constantly there, nudging me, pushing me forward. And so if you allow it, he, he will work within you and he will push you towards helping others and loving others and gathering others. So, Thank you for sharing. I can see how that's been true for you and how that can help all of us. Yeah. Yeah. So. So once again, thank you so much, Brigham, for joining us on our podcast. And uh, we're grateful to hear all the great work that you're doing. And don't follow me. And we'll see you next time. Yeah, thank you, Christina. It's been a pleasure and always happy to chat with you. We'd love to chat with you again. Okay, thank you so much.